Hey, Deserving Listeners, a lot of you have been asking me to do Colt and Larissa. You want me to react to Colt and Larissa on 90 Day Fiancé. Let's get to it. My name is Dr. Kirk Honda. I'm a therapist and a professor. I've been both those things for over 20 years. I have to have a lot of things to say, so let's see if anything of interest comes out of my face as I watch the show. I'm a software engineer, and I live with my cats, baby girl, cookie dough, and sugar. Colt, breakfast! And my mother, Debbie. Okay, so first off, we see that he lives with his three cats, which are adorable, and with his mom. In in the United States, we tend to pathologize that. We tend to look at that as something wrong with that. He's 33 years old. What's wrong with him? Around the world, it's very normal. In the United States, we tend to privilege individuality, and there are pros and cons to having your own house and, and moving on and living on your own, for sure, but there are also pros and cons to living with your parents. We tend to look at someone like this as, well, he's a, he's a mama's boy, he's in tech, he's a nerd, uh, he you know, has cats, he's soft, he's not a real man, and these kinds of ideas are ridiculous. Let's continue watching and see if this will change my mind with additional data. My mother cooks for me, does my laundry and whatever, and she will drive me to work and pick me up because we only have one vehicle. You could say I'm a bit of a mommy's boy. Hey, Mom. Morning. How'd you sleep? Good. How about you? Pretty good. Ever since my father passed 10 years ago, we've been very close and we've taken care of each other. Okay, so that's one detail about Colt that I always appreciate learning about people's histories, that his father died 10 years ago. What did he say? Something along those lines. And they've, you know, tried to be there for each other after that event. So, you know, maybe, maybe that's a reason as to why he still lives in the home. You know, who knows? Let's just continue watching. We've been living together more or less since I was born. She loves me with all of her heart. I'm her baby boy, and I love her. Baby girl wants breakfast, too. <laughs> baby girl has a tendency to... Colt and I have been having breakfast together for over 30 years. Are you finished? Yeah. Very good. I definitely spoil Colt by doing everything around the house. I don't think he even knows how to make a bed. (laughs) Okay, so another little detail there is that she does a lot of his chores, and she says that she doesn't think he knows how to make a bed. It's not hard to make a bed, so I have a hard time believing he wouldn't be able to. So, you know, gives us a little bit more insight into their dynamic. It's not much to go off of, but, you know, another little data point. In my spare time, I enjoy fixing things. <laughs> Maybe breaking things more often. I spend most of my free time alone with my cats. What are you doing? Want to play video games? You could say I'm more of an introvert. I never thought I would get married. All my previous relationships have ended with me getting a broken heart. Okay, a little bit more data. He likes to play video games, as do most 33-year-olds these days. He really likes his cats. And I, as a person who loves cats and dogs, it annoys me when cats are associated with femininity or being a loser or something. I say... People should have at least three cats. We have two. Uh, I want more, though. I want more dogs, too. Uh, Animals are great, and if you have pets, you you know that as well. Then he also says that his relationships in the past have not gone well. They've been disasters for him, as is usually the case for people on this show. And that might prompt people to look abroad for, for a spouse. And what I've said before is it's an interesting impulse that you have a lot of relationships with people in your town, they don't go well, and then you think, well, maybe if I get someone from another country, things will go better. The thing that I wish people did was to say, hmm, okay, what, I wonder what it is about my history and my emotional wounds, my relationship wounds, that are contributing to these relationships that aren't going well. Because whatever wounds you have, you will carry with you whether your spouse comes from your town or from across the globe. After having struck out a few times online with American girls, I thought maybe I could search outside the country, maybe find a girl 
and then I met Larissa. Larissa lives in Brazil and she's 31 years old. I'm writing my diary and how sad I am, but it's merely a week, probably less than a week. We've been apart for a very long time. I don't think rescheduling for a few hours is reasonable. I think waiting an extra few days is more logical and a better solution to our problem. There's something interesting about the way that he talks. I don't know what it indicates, but it is notable, something to keep track of. There's a blankness to the way that he talks. This can mean a lot of different things. One, it could just mean that's just the way that he is, or maybe that's the way his dad was and he models himself after that. It's also possible that he's depressed. It's also possible that he's anxious frequently. It's also possible that due to relational issues when he was growing up, he learned that it was better to subdue his emotions and subdue, subdue his spontaneity because when he was spontaneous, bad things would happen to him. And so he's just learned to be very inflexible and not spontaneous and not expressive with, with his face. He also has almost a way of talking where he almost is slurring his words, which again could be a lot of different things. One of the things it could be is being very tired or intoxication of some kind or just the way that you talk. So I, I'm just taking note of that in terms of uh, trying to develop an idea of who he is. There's, there's a lot of question marks, but it is notable to me the way that he talks. She seemed a little distant. I would say she's definitely more emotional and I'm more rational. I think that's an interesting dynamic that may present problems moving ahead. Okay, so this is a frequent dynamic that we'll see in couples where one person says they're emotional and the other person says they're rational. Now, what do people mean by that? I don't know what Colt meant by that. But it is a narrative, particularly that men are rational and women are emotional. This is false when we actually look at human beings in a scientific manner. All humans are emotional and all humans are capable of rationality. Some people are socialized to emphasize one and to de-emphasize the other. But another thing that'll happen to people is that because of some wound that they're going through, some kind of relational trauma, some kind of difficulty, they might resort to rationality, intellectualization. Those who watch my Married at First Sight uh, reaction videos might recognize that intellectual aspect in Michael. He was adopted like nine months after he was born, which can unfortunately create a lot of attachment issue, issues neurologically and relationship difficulties, difficulty trusting other people, difficulty connecting because of that abandonment. And as an adult, they might intellectualize when they're having emotions because their emotions are overwhelming to them on one level and also they don't really trust other people to care about their emotions. And traditionally, because of the people that they were around or the way that they contributed to their relationships, the relationships didn't go well and thus it wasn't helpful to express your emotions or even feel them. And so you start to believe I'm intellectual, I'm a robot, I don't have emotions. And people, clients will come to me, some of you will email me around this, some of you will comment below saying that you feel that way about yourself, that you, you don't feel emotions very often. You think of yourself as a robot. You've been called unemotional by others. There are some conditions that can result in a lack of emotionality, but those are extremely rare conditions. In most cases, when someone is intellectualizing and considers themselves rational and people call them unemotional, Usually what the case is, is there's a, just a roiling mess of emotions that are going on underneath the surface, but they're so buried because they learned when they were two, three, four years old to bury them. And they're, they express the emotions through various other ways, through substance abuse, through violence, through video games, through fantasy, through anger, through getting road rage. You know, there's various different ways in which the emotions will come out sometimes through sexuality. So 
that's what I wonder about Colt. I, of course, have no idea, but let's continue watching. We don't all live in golden houses and drive rocket cars. We're going to have more bills very soon with your arrival. We have to make plans to live together. Why would I jeopardize our first months together because you want to rush things? My point of view, if you love someone, you have to do everything Honey, to done. be cozy. So this is interesting. They're having a fight, a low-grade fight, I would say. And this is the second time they've shown this fight in that she wants him to buy a ticket right away. She wants to come today. And he's saying, I can't afford that. We're going to have to wait a couple of weeks. And she's like, well, if you really love me, then you would make it happen. And you're American, and you can make it happen. And he's saying... I have bills to pay, and when you get up here, K-1 visa, I have to save money. So what's going on here? With Colt, it makes sense. He's being rational about it. He's the intellectual one. He's the rational one. She's the emotional one. That's his narrative. It's certainly exhibited in this moment. He's being practical and responsible, and she's being spontaneous and wants to see him now. So where is her motivation coming from? Because I think most people would, would agree with Colt in that it's like, well, it's just two weeks. You're going to spend the rest of your life together. What's another two weeks? And to buy a ticket today, it's four times as much or something like that. Who knows? So where would her motivation come from? Is it coming from a place of love? She's just so desperate to see him. She can't, just can't wait to see him because she's so in love with him. Could be. Or is it something else? Something that comes to mind is that... She likes to get other people to do things that they don't want to do as some evidence that she has power or evidence that she's being loved. If you're raised in a way in which you didn't get a lot of love, you might actually look for markers of love that don't really mean actual love. Let me give an example. So let's say you grow up in a family where you're being emotionally neglected. There's abandonment, divorce, whatever. And as a kid, you feel deprived. You feel like people don't really love you. You feel abandoned. And then every once in a while, your parents give you something. They buy you a new pair of shoes or they buy you a toy. And it feels like they're paying attention to you. And although it's not real love, it is, you know, it feels like attention. It feels like kind of love. Like it kind of feels like you matter. And so you latch on to this concrete evidence that you matter and that you're being loved. And then you retain that notion into life and you look primarily for material goods or for people spending money on you because that's concrete. And that was one of the only ways in which you got love when you were growing up while ignoring all the other ways in which people express love, like I'm guessing Colt has expressed with his words, with him saying, I definitely want you to come up in two weeks. I'm going to be responsible for you by not buying the ticket right away. I, I'm going to show you that I love you in that way. And when we focus on that one thing, because that was the only way we were getting love as, as kids, we might ignore all the other ways, or we might not even have a good way of detecting it because we didn't get those kinds of love when we were growing up and we might have closed ourselves off to it. I don't know. It's just an idea that comes to mind because it, it certainly seems to be crossing a line with her. She's really laying it on thick, really making him feel bad. And you just have to wonder why it's so hard for her to understand that a couple weeks to save a lot of money is the right thing to do. It's just interesting. And she's not saying like, well, okay, I get it, Colt, my love, but I'm just so desperate to see you. She's not really having that vibe, right? She's more just like giving him the cold shoulder in the way that I guess a child might. Anyway, let's continue watching. Now you will have me more time alone. Well, and I can have more. You could do to make some things to please me, like maybe do every day, work out, and shave your beard. Well, I'd rather like my beard, but. Okay, maybe. We don't agree with it. <laughs> Have a good day. Have a good day, darling. I love you. I am stuck in Brazil for two weeks. Do you see what I mean about the way that he talks? There's something stunted. Now, again, it could be a lot of different things. It could be 
because he's being filmed and he's shy, he says he's an introvert. It could be just the way that he talks, but it seems to come out in a non-spontaneous way, like he's reading from a script or something. I don't know what that means. I, I, I don't know if it means that he's not sincere. I think he is sincere when he says those things, but it is notable. I, I, maybe I'll develop an hypothesis as, as we move forward. Honey, I love you. Bye bye. I'm a little disappointed right now. I feel like Larissa is being quite uh, ridiculous in her demands. She doesn't understand the larger picture. I have to think of these things for us both. She thinks it comes to America, everyone lives in hotel high rises, lights and glamour. It's not realistic expectations. Okay, so he is tearing up a little bit, which is a good sign. It means that he can express normal emotion. It makes sense that he's hurt. She was essentially saying to him, I don't like you right now because you're not buying a ticket for me right now. And I don't accept your explanation. I don't accept your rationale there. And two weeks is too long. And I reject you emotionally in this moment. And it hurt him. And he's starting to tear up a little bit. It's, you know, it's a healthy sign that he can express that. Then there's a situation with my mother. So how was your day? It was pretty good. Fishing up a project at work. I'm not sure how my mother is going to react when Larissa enters the picture. It's just been my mother and I pretty much my entire life. My relationship with my mother has always been very good. Maybe, maybe we're a little too close, but in my opinion, a man's first best friend would be his mother. Okay, again, there's nothing wrong with someone believing that. Some of you might go, oh my God, that's so weird. That's so pathological. And maybe it is. We did hear our first hint of pathology in that he said, uh, maybe we're too close. I want to know what he means by that. Maybe we'll find out. Well, I think she thinks Las Vegas is just the strip. And, and you know, that's it. <laughs> I've lived with my mother most of my life. We also share one vehicle. In the past, I think it had an effect on my relationships. On more than one occasion, I had a girl tell me that she was more or less a burden and that I should think about separating myself from her. Things are going to have changed. Well, yeah. Okay, so that's another data point. People he dated in the past thought that his relationship with his mom wasn't healthy. I don't know if they were accurate or not. I'm guessing we'll get to more definitive data whether or not there's a pathology or not. It's probably not easy for you going through all this change, but... Yeah. I am very nervous. Um, I've never met Larissa. I've talked to her on the phone. And I'm a little sad that, that the situation will change a little bit. That's what happens when your children grow up. Very healthy for her to say, very normal. Some people might say, well, he's 33, come on. But for this family, they lost the father and the family. These two probably became more dependent on each other during that time. Maybe there's other factors here. And it's a loss for her that's coming up. She is going to potentially lose her son to a wife, and she is going to potentially not live with him anymore, or at least that's what she might be thinking. And that's sad. If, if you're a parent and you've had your kids move out, there's pros and cons, you know, there's, there's a lot of obvious pros to having your kids move out, but there's a lot of cons. There's a lot of grief, there's a lot of fear, there's a lot of wondering what the purpose of my life is, there's a lot of who do I socialize with, that kind of thing. So, you know, it's, it's okay for her to have those feelings and for her to express that, that's also healthy. Come, Sarah. True. Never be the same again. No. Where's she gonna sit? That's just about what I was gonna say. <laughs> well, from what I understand, couples, Brazilian couples, sit next to each other when they dine. So compared like you and I, if we were dating, we might sit across from each other. Yeah, that would be good. Well, she's sitting next to me. <laughs> well, but we're adding a new dynamic to our situation. 
be different. So I don't know if I heard that right, but the mom seemed to be saying that she, uh, in the in the seating arrangement culture that she would want to be dating her son. I, I don't know if I caught that. Uh, I'll give her the benefit benefit of the doubt, and that wasn't what she was saying. But let's continue watching. She's the first woman I've ever been with. That it's like okay. You want to marry? You're done. You've never mentioned that before. The elephant in the room, of course, is, you know, boundaries and privacy. And her and I are a couple, and so. Absolutely. There are things we need to do, want to do by ourselves. Shut your door. When your door is closed, I won't bother you. When my door is closed, don't bother me. You never know who I might have over. As long as you keep a sock <laughs> on the door handle, it'll be fine. Okay, so it's practical. It's very rational to... Talk about that. It's like, okay, well, son, when your door is closed, I won't come in. And when my door is closed, don't come in. Maybe I'll be dating someone too. Uh, you know, it's, it's good to work that sort of stuff out. Good to have those rules set out before a disaster happens. You guys will be out doing stuff and enjoying each other's company and I'll miss not being involved in a lot of your stuff. Well, but that's expected. You'll always be you're a part of the family. But it's still sad. It's very hard. It's, I mean, we've been together for so long. I just don't want to feel left out, even though I know I'm supposed to get my own life and move on, but it's still hard, and I just don't want to be left out completely. So let's go. I'm hearing a lot of good things. They are expressing themselves in a very healthy way. She's just saying, yeah, it'll be sad. It, you know, I, you're moving on, and that's good, but I don't want to be left out. But I think it's probably for the best, and and he feels sad, and you you know you really sense the bond that they have, and that's good. I'm not seeing anything problematic there. Uh, it's we've seen a lot of behavior on this show, in which people bury those feelings and they express anger, or they will become very tough, tough guy with the other person as a defense, or they'll put on a big show like. Well, you, you know, you, you just know the behavior I'm talking about. And so when I see, let's rewind this actually and watch this conversation because I don't know, maybe these people, I'm guessing you want me to watch Colt and Larissa because there's big problems and maybe problems with her. I don't know. But at least in this instance, this conversation is very healthy. Let's watch it again. You guys will be out doing stuff and enjoying each other's company and I'll miss not being involved in a lot of your stuff. Well, but that's expected. You'll always be your right. part of the family. But it's still sad. It's very hard. It's, I mean, we've been together for so long. I just don't want to feel left out, even though I know I'm supposed to get my own life and move on, but it's still hard, and I just don't want to be left out completely. I mean, I guess one of the troubling things, or one of the things I worry about, is that she says, yeah, I know I'm supposed to have my own life and move on. Well, she should also have her own life even though she lives with her son. <laughs> Just because she lives with her son doesn't mean she shouldn't have her own life. Even when you have kids that are five years old, you should have your own life. So that's a, that's a little worrisome. I don't know what she means by that exactly. Maybe she does have kind of a life and she's talking about having more of a life. But anyway, it's a, it's a little bit of a red flag. From Minas Gerais, Brazil. I feel really happy to finally have this chance to see Coach again and start a new life. So, will you buy to your flowers? When I saw Coach at the airport, I thought that he will bring me some things like maybe chocolate, flowers, to show me how much I'm important to him now that I finally moved to America. Okay. So another data point, it sounds like she's not that upset, but that is her emphasis that she noticed and she was hoping that he would have a bunch of gifts for her. And we've certainly seen that on the show. A lot of the people greeting in the airport will have flowers or gifts or whatever. Colt didn't for whatever reason. I mean, it's not his style or he didn't think of it or whatever. And she was you know, a little upset about that. So another data point in the column of material things equals love. That's 
two data points don't make a personality hypothesis, but let's just continue watching. But when I saw him without nothing in his hands, I thought, what's going on? Okay, I miss you. I miss you too. That is the flowers, Boat. Yep, those are the flowers. So? I'm not going to buy you $20 from flowers with $20? Yeah. That's probably how much parking is since I arrived so early for you. So it could just be some kind of value difference that the two of them have. Maybe for her, she wants to be wined and dined and, you know, flowered and chocolated and all those kinds of things. And he's just like, ah, you know, it's just not really my style. Or this is something more fundamental to the way that she thinks about love and thinks about what an ideal relationship looks like. And it's hard for her to see the other kinds of love that I was talking about earlier. Colt isn't very exuberant. He's not very enthusiastic. If you were to watch them from outside, you would think maybe they were associates that work together, not necessarily romantic partners. So it's not like Colt is giving her other kinds of love. Maybe she's attaching to these flowers as a, as again, just trying to get some indication that he cares you know, so that she can feel secure. I don't know. Uh, there's just a lot of question marks. You look really beautiful. Thank you. I would love to show the rest of the city and just show her around the, the house that she's gonna live in and just talk to her and just, just be with her. He should bring flowers. I think it's a little interesting that she's so focused on the flowers. What are the flowers going to give you? Uh, it's a nice gesture. It's, it's pleasant. It's like, oh, flowers. You smell them. You put them in a vase and you look at them. It's a token. But there's so many other things to attend to. She's potentially going to live in the United States forever. She's going to live in Las Vegas forever. She's going to live with him forever. She's going to live with the mom, maybe. She is not going to live with her family in Brazil. There's a lot of other things you would think would be on your mind. Now, I'm guessing those things are on her mind, but why are the flowers the central feature in her focus? It's, it's just interesting. It's yours? Yes. That gets me where I want to go. <laughs> Most of the time. Just yesterday, I didn't have Larissa in my life, and now I do, and it's crazy. <laughs> when I saw Colty at the airport, I expected that he would bring me flowers because, he, you know, it's something cute and he's a gentleman, but he, he just smiles, so it's okay. <laughs> okay, still focused on the flowers. But she's saying, well, but, you know, he smiles and that's okay. So maybe she's moved on. Honey, it's Vegas. Where is the Vegas of the, the new movies? <laughs> it's right there. Gander. Over there. Hair is hot. I don't have air conditioning. Oh. It's going to get a little hotter, too. Oh, my God. I can't feel the... the, the the hot, warm. His car doesn't have air conditioning <laughs> in Vegas. Oh my God, that has got to be rough. Now, I didn't have a car with air conditioning until, I don't know, I was quite a bit old. I was uh, probably older than Colt. But I live in Seattle, <laughs> so. Yeah, roll down your window. Roll down your window. Babe, it's more hot than Brazil. Roll down your window, please. You, I'm just uh, telling you that it's more hot in Brazil. Yeah, I, we're in a desert. Does Brazil have deserts at all? No, it doesn't. My first goal in America is marry, second, apply for the green card, and third, buy a car with air conditioner. <laughs> so we saw Colt get a little angry in that moment. She is complaining about how hot it is. And he started to get a little, you know, a little short in his response to her. 
So it's interesting. We haven't seen him have that response yet. I'm guessing since you're asking me to watch this couple, we're going to see much bigger versions of that. Let's continue watching. In future, I would like not living here. You've only been here three hours. <laughs> well, we'll talk about it later. Spend at least one day here. My dream was move to a place completely different than Brazil. And here, it's a nightmare. I mean, it's a city. We live here now, so we don't have to live here forever. So it's a little interesting, other data point, that she just landed in Las Vegas and she has stated it's a nightmare in Las Vegas. As if for him, he can just pick up and move wherever he wants to. We're starting to see a, I don't know what to call it in Larissa, uh, very quick to ask for things and put pressure on him to give her things. That's a nice way of putting it that I will stand by. Let's continue watching. My expectation was like a, a movie. I walk, I feel comfortable, but it's like a Mars, you know, it's like a other planet. It's... So it's also mean. Imagine your, the love of your life lands in your town and one of the only things they can really focus on, or they, they focus on two things. You didn't bring them flowers and they hate your town. <laughs> they hate your car, they hate your town, they hate the weather in your town, they hate the fact that you didn't give them fla flowers and chocolates. That's, you know, it can be hurtful. I don't know how he's taking it and they're editing this, so maybe there's little uh, warm moments between the two of them that we're not seeing, but uh, it's notable. Or Larissa seems to hate everything about Las Vegas. I can tell that she doesn't like being here. And I'm literally terrified about bringing her home and meeting my mother and my cats. I really hope that my mother and Larissa can get along. Okay, you wanna go? Let's go. But again, there's nothing wrong with her not liking the fact that he didn't bring her flowers, not liking Vegas, not liking the weather. But the fact that that's the emphasis and that's her focus instead of, oh my God, I'm with the man that I love. I'm so glad that I am with you. I'll live with you anywhere. And then maybe in the back of her head, it's just like, well, you know, maybe, maybe we won't live in Vegas forever. It, it's just notable. I don't know. Maybe they have all sorts of intimate, nice moments ahead of us in this series. We'll, we'll, we'll watch. I think that's the end. Let's watch a little bit more. What? I can't believe it. But do you live here? <laughs> Oh, well. All right. Well, that does it for my first installment of the Colt and Larissa story on 90 Day Fiance. If there's a good response to this episode, then I will continue to do it. So it depends on you. Subscribe, like, comment, hit the bell, <laughs> become a patron on Patreon. And to all those who have become a patron on Patreon, thank you so much. It really means the world to me that you actually take that step and demonstrate that you really care about what we're doing here. And by becoming a patron, it gives us the ability to actually dedicate time to doing all the things that we do on this podcast, including these reaction videos. All right, everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.